past few days have been some of the most turbulent for the Artemis program and for Starship's role within it since the lineup for the new race to the moon was first established. Yet Starship remains a truly unique vehicle, offering greater potential than any other system in development today. Recently, Musk once again revealed ambitious plans for Starship that could challenge NASA's decisions and possibly become the key to America's success on the lunar surface. So what exactly are Musk and SpaceX planning to achieve on the moon with Starship? And how do these capabilities surpass those of other vehicles? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. For many years now, the world has envisioned humanity's return to the moon aboard a massive vehicle known as Starship HLS, following its selection by NASA for the Artemis program. However, that expectation is now facing uncertainty, as Artemis 3 has suddenly turned into a competition, a race that SpaceX's Starship must win if it wishes to retain its place at the heart of the program. To understand how this situation developed, we must acknowledge one undeniable truth. Starship's progress has been slower and less predictable than many anticipated. For SpaceX to maintain its position, the company will need to accelerate Starship's progress. Yet faster development alone will not be enough. What has always set Starship apart is its extraordinary potential, the very reason NASA originally selected it for Artemis. If SpaceX can demonstrate that potential convincingly, Starship could still outshine every rival and secure its role in humanity's return to the moon. Recently, NASA official Sean Duffy pointed to Blue Origin as a strong competitor, noting its clearer progress toward a lunar lander capable of safely transporting a crew before China achieves its own landing. This suggestion clearly struck a chord with Musk, who responded on X by saying, a permanently crewed lunar science base would be far more impressive than a repeat of what was already done incredibly well by Apollo in 1969. Musk's response reflects a critical shift in strategy for lunar exploration. Reaching the moon first is no longer the ultimate goal. Unlike the Apollo era, this new race is not about planting a flag and returning home. It's about staying. The focus has moved from short-term achievement to long-term presence. The new objective is to establish a permanent lunar base, develop resources, and begin the early steps of building an off-world civilization. This vision is not exclusive to Musk. It aligns with the broader ambitions of both the U.S. and China. The nation that can establish a sustainable foothold on the moon will secure a strategic, technological, and economic advantage that far extends beyond symbolic victory. And when asked which vehicle can make this long-term lunar vision possible, the answer points clearly to Starship. Starship is unlike any spacecraft humanity has ever built. Even in its early forms, it towers over traditional rockets and landers. Standing over 50 meters tall and 9 meters in diameter, Starship is immense, and future versions such as the V3 and V4 are expected to be even larger. This vast scale allows SpaceX to dedicate an enormous internal volume to cargo estimated at more than 1,000 cubic meters, which is greater than the total pressurized volume of the International Space Station. With this capacity, Starship HLS can carry more than 100 tons of payload, including supplies, scientific equipment, and even large-scale construction materials. Later versions could potentially double that capacity capacity to 200 tons. In practical terms, a single Starship HLS flight could deliver as much cargo as dozens of smaller landers combined. This capability would dramatically accelerate lunar exploration, enabling early missions to carry not just astronauts, but the tools and materials needed to build a lasting presence. More importantly, Starship's immense capacity supports the creation of a lunar base almost immediately after the first landing. Instead of requiring dozens or even hundreds of smaller missions to ferry equipment piece by piece, a handful of Starship flights could establish the foundation 
of a large and functional lunar habitat. The construction of a fully equipped base, complete with power systems, laboratories, and living quarters, could unfold within just a few missions. This is where Starship's true advantage lies. Blue Origin's Blue Moon Lander, while promising, operates under a more traditional design philosophy, one that prioritizes smaller payloads and incremental expansion. In fact, if SpaceX chooses, Starship itself could become a moon base. The idea, though ambitious, is technically feasible. By transitioning from a vertical landing configuration to a horizontal state on the surface, the spacecraft could be repurposed into a habitat. Such a conversion would require robust engineering solutions, such as support structures, internal reconfiguration systems, and life support integration. But if accomplished, each starship could become a self-contained lunar outpost. Imagine several starships on the moon, each one forming a section of a growing base complex. Together, they could provide living quarters, laboratories, storage areas, and even greenhouses for food production. Because the Starship HLS design incorporates the latest advancements in environmental control, thermal protection, and power management, these habitats would be far more advanced and efficient than any previous lunar modules. This approach offers a major advantage, saving time and cost. Traditional lunar base construction demands multiple missions to deliver and assemble habitats, each costly and risky. Converting Starship itself into a base removes much of that complexity, focusing instead on outfitting it for habitation, reducing launches and expenses. By leveraging Starship's versatility, the U.S. could establish a sustainable lunar presence far sooner and cheaper than its rivals. A crewed landing by 2027 could mark the start with follow-up missions turning landed starships into permanent bases, potentially before China's first lunar footsteps. Starship's capacity, adaptability, and reusability make it more than a lander. It's a foundation for permanence. Musk's vision is clear, to make the moon a gateway to deeper space. SpaceX's drive, reignited ignited by competition, shows it won't yield easily. So, is Starship the key to securing America's lasting presence on the moon and outpacing China? Let me know with a yes or no in the comment section down below. For years, the world has envisioned humanity's grand return to the lunar surface aboard SpaceX's mighty Starship, a vessel built to redefine the limits of space exploration. Yet, despite its extraordinary promise, Starship's path forward may still be shaped by the direct of NASA's leadership. Under Sean Duffy's guidance, NASA remains committed to achieving the first lunar landing while fostering open competition among its contractors. This strategy sets the stage for a high-stakes showdown between SpaceX and Blue Origin, two titans racing to prove themselves as NASA's most capable lunar partner. And in that contest for dominance, SpaceX will not back down. However, such competition could complicate the overall structure of the Artemis program. Without a stable framework defining which organization and which vehicle will handle each mission, the sequence of future lunar expeditions could become fragmented and disorganized. This uncertainty poses a significant risk to NASA's long-term objectives. That situation could shift dramatically if NASA leadership were to change. Jared Isaacman, a respected private astronaut and commander of several SpaceX missions, has emerged as a potential candidate for NASA administrator. He already has strong backing from former astronauts and Elon Musk himself. If Isaacman were appointed, the Artemis program would likely continue to prioritize beating China to the moon, but his leadership style would emphasize coordination over competition. Each mission would retain its own goals and assigned vehicles, while every contractor would be held accountable for measurable progress and public transparency. Given Isaacman Isaacman's close working relationship with SpaceX, his appointment could also strengthen Starship's role within Artemis. He understands its capabilities and its potential to serve not only as a lunar lander, but also as the foundation for a long-term moon base. Under his direction, NASA might place greater emphasis on exploiting Starship's full potential, accelerating both technological development and mission planning. In the end, the competition for 
where the position of NASA administrator will play a pivotal role in shaping America's lunar strategy. But while Washington debates leadership, the clock keeps ticking. If SpaceX truly intends to unlock Starship's full potential, Musk and his team must accelerate development at a pace the world has never seen. The calendar has already turned deep into the second half of 2025, leaving less than two years before Artemis III, the mission destined to return humanity to the lunar surface. Time is no longer a luxury. It has become SpaceX's most formidable adversary. Since Starship HLS was awarded as NASA's lunar lander, progress has been steady but far from reassuring. To stay on course, SpaceX must conduct an early launch of the Starship HLS prototype as soon as possible, ideally within the coming months. That early test flight is essential not only for the official Artemis III mission, but also for the uncrewed lunar landing demonstration that NASA requires by the end of next year. Both flights are critical milestones that will validate the spacecraft systems and prove its readiness for human missions. Because of this demanding schedule, SpaceX must also achieve several major technical goals during upcoming Starship launches. These include mastering orbital landing procedures, performing live payload deployment, and perfecting the in-space refilling system. The refilling system in particular will allow one Starship to transfer propellant to another while in orbit, providing the fuel needed for deep space missions. Without this system, Starship cannot perform long-duration lunar or interplanetary flights. Developing and testing orbital refilling is among SpaceX's toughest challenges, demanding precise guidance, complex fluid transfer, and perfect coordination between spacecraft. Many see it as the program's biggest hurdle, with critics doubting it can be mastered in time. Yet Musk and Shotwell remain confident, comparing the task to Dragon's flawless ISS dockings, a skill that SpaceX has long perfected. If that same precision is applied, refilling could be ready as soon as next year. Meanwhile, SpaceX continues refining Starship HLS's interior for transport and habitation, ensuring safety, comfort, and flexibility. Musk has even suggested turning landed starships into lunar habitats, a bold step toward permanence. The coming year will be critical. Each flight and milestone will reveal whether Starship can meet NASA's goals and enable humanity's sustained presence beyond Earth. My friends, we are now entering one of the most turbulent and uncertain phases of the Artemis program. As competition intensifies, the world watches to see if SpaceX can once again rise to the challenge and cement Starship's role at the heart of humanity's return to the moon. That said, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.